welcome. This is Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, and welcome to Buzz Builders. Today we're going to talk about website image tips, tricks, and gotchas. We're going to go through some cool stuff that you can do to get images on your website, talk about how to resize, how to get things set up for you, and uh, just in general we're going to cover everything that you should know if you're serious about publishing images on your website. There's a lot of things that you need to know, and uh, we'd like to make it as easy as possible for our clients so we'll dive right in. Um, if you are joining us again today, I um, wanted to allow you to add or ask a question. Um, let's see, Q&A, I believe, should be available for our audience today. Um, right now it's off, so and the Hangout is live, so I'm not going to be able to turn that on. We're going to have to go back to our old standby then of just asking you to just send in questions via busyweb.com slash bb. Go into this page, click up and get a hold of us by either tweeting to hashtag buzzbuilders, sending an email at the bottom of the post for today, and, uh, and through the submit a question or speak your mind link, or of course you can send an email to sales at busyweb.com. We will open up the broadcast to the public at the end to do some Q&A and tech support. And uh, as we do each week, we'll go through a little bit about BusyWeb. So now's the time to join us live on the Hangout. If you do want to get more in-depth with this, go again to busyweb.com slash bb, or just go to busyweb.com, click on the article that's at the top, which is today's article on website image editing. And uh, right underneath the embedded video, you're going to see a link. You're going to want to follow that link and get a hold of us by going in to that link to join live. All right, well as we do each week, <coughs> we go through a bunch of stuff and um, what I'm going to cover first is just a little bit about who BusyWeb is, what we do, and uh, who we are. So um, I'm just going to uh, mute out folks here as they join up and I think we're all good. So switch on camera now to and there we go all right so here's who busy web is who we are what we do we do web design and social media basically online marketing is busy webs bag and we take that online marketing and create a website that's beautiful and that works really well and that's fully search engine optimized so you can get found but we also integrate social media in a rather unique way when you create a busy web powered website, uh, we set it up so that when you publish to your website, when you make a post or post a new news item, with one click you can auto publish to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Plus, and what have you, and get that content out to the clients and the audiences that you need to reach most. What that might look like across the board then is with a Google Plus page up front here, um, a Facebook page, which is right behind there, and in the next couple of weeks we're going to talk about Facebook. Again, um, we're going to go through and we'll build, it'll po auto post to your LinkedIn company page and then of course to your Twitter account. So all those steps with one little click. And we do that quite easily and there'll be more about that at the end of the call. So next up let's talk about image editing tips. We've got a lot of cool stuff that's available. There's a lot of options and new things that you can take, a, take advantage of inside of image editing. One of our favorite tools will cover in a little bit of detail, but I'll also take you under the hood of a WordPress website so you can see what it's like to actually edit an image. The key things that you need to know with image editing are first, to keep your images no larger than you absolutely need them to be. We have to think at all times about mobile devices now because it's estimated that as many as 79 percent of people when they do their first searches on anything relating anything in the world they're using their cell phones now. So if they happen to be out in the middle of nowhere or in a spot with light coverage or no Wi-Fi they might be going on a 3G network that has glacially slow by desktop computer standards uh, internet access. So the smaller, more compact, and more optimized you can make those images, the better things are going to be for your visitors. So 
typically keep your images before you even upload them into your website. Keep them at no larger than 1024 by 768. That happens to be standard default resolution for most um, monitors or for folks that have bigger monitors. That's probably about the size of their standard web browser window. And most websites are set to publish at no wider than 1024 pixels. So if you keep it there, even if they go full screen on that browser window, the image is still going to look great. If you're going to post photos of people or anything that has blurry items in it or, you know, I would say lots of gradients, so again, skin tones on images of people, um, images of landscapes, anything that has a lot of color changes with a lot of gradients, you're going to want to use JPEG or JPG. Um, that's the easiest way to make sure that your images are best compressed with the best trade-off of image quality. There are two other mass or mass used file formats. One of them is the new kid on the block, PNG or PINGS um, or GIF or GIFs or GIFs as the creator of GIFs say, but I still go with GIFs, are better for line art or for animations. And when you do a PNG or a GIF image, you want to keep that to 128 colors or less. PNGs and GIFs, pings and GIFs, are in general meant for logos, um, line art animations, stuff like text rendered or anything that has like a graphic. If it's lots of blocks of solid colors, the way that GIFs and pings work is they basically just say, make this image or in this particular spot in this image, make this particular part of the image this color and go for 17 pixels that way. So it's more directions for images versus actually um, translating the image into a computer format like a JPEG is. So JPEGs are kind of blurry and they just kind of mush things in and make their best guess and that typically fools the eye, especially at anything 50% quality or more. And then pings and GIFs, if you keep it at 128 colors or less, for that type of image, you're going to have really good file sizes as well. Now, a good photo editing program will allow you to try out what those images will look like and what the file sizes will be for those particular images. So what uh, if you have a large image of probably a photo or a landscape, if you tried to save that as a GIF or a PNG, you'd see that it's probably two to three times larger than a JPEG would be for similar quality. There's just a whole lot more that a GIF has to do. If you have any animations or anything with transparency, GIFs and pings are about your only option. You can set those um, as, as needed. One note is for PNGs in particular, you want to set those at 32-bit versus um, 16 if you're going to keep transparencies because some browsers will take transparency and replay that as being black instead of transparent if you, if you don't uh, use the right style of PNG. In general, your sizes should really be as small as possible both in physical dimensions but also in file size. Uh, at most 100 kilobytes, and again, on a 3G modem, 100 kilobytes is going to take several seconds to download, so it's going to seem like forever if you're downloading it on an iPhone or an Android device in spotty coverage. If, uh, if you can keep things under 30 kilobytes, or in particular, I like to keep things under 15 or 16 for most images, um, that's going to give you a really speedy website, and it's going to keep your customers happy and not get in the way of them finding what they're interested in. You get about 10 seconds worth of uh, attention for anyone that's browsing your website the first time, and if nine of those 10 seconds are spent just loading the images, that already sets you up for failure. So you're going to want to make sure to take as good advantage as you possibly can of optimization. Another really great tool that you'll want to consider is smushit.com. This is a Yahoo tool and you can grab any image 
and load it into this Smush It tool. And depending on the type of image it is, it'll save it into a proper format and compress it down to an optimized version. So if you are just snapping pictures, you can crop it using an online web tool, and I'll share a couple of those in a moment. Or you can very simply go to Smush It and see what it'll do. And you can see um, on this screenshot that I shared here, it downgraded that image or smushed the image about 15% just by running it right through this Smush It tool. So I had already optimized that image um, and pushed it through, but then it, just running it through Smush It did it 15% uh, smaller again. So very easy and a free tool for web folks to use. Photoshop is probably the granddaddy of all editors. Um, if you're looking for a cheap or inexpensive tool, you know, Photoshop can be very expensive. For Photoshop um, in the latest version, it's actually only subscription model, so you just have to pay photo or you have to pay Adobe to get access to their creative suite now. And I believe that's like 30 bucks a month for an entire program. Great, great option if you're a professional image editor. But if for, for most folks, you're probably going to want to go with a lot cheaper or even free versions. Um, there is Photoshop Elements, and Photoshop in that scaled down format tends to ship with a lot of cameras, a lot of web cameras um, or digital cameras now. So you can use that to resize and place your images. Or if you'd like a free tool or a very inexpensive tool, um, Pixelmator, I really like for the Mac. I think it's $5 for the Mac, and it has almost all of the same tools that um, Photoshop does as far as image editing and manipulation. You can't add quite as many layers or paths, and you can't do quite as many funky digital effects and things, but you really can do a whole lot more with, or just about as much with Pixelmator as you can with Photoshop, at least for most folks. Same thing with Pixlr for, um, for Windows or anyone that just has a web application that they'd like to use. You just go to pixlr.com uh, or Google Pixlr and visit the website, and it'll actually help you to reconfigure and resize, add items to your images as necessary. Very quick, slick, and easy. And back when I started BusyWeb in 1999, none of these tools were available. Photoshop was but you know, Photoshop's always been either several hundred dollars to buy or um, now a one-time monthly fee of 30 bucks or more to keep going. So the new tools that are available for either very inexpensive or free are just amazing, really. And so we really don't have any excuse not to have great images on, the, on our websites anymore. To find photos, this is where I'm going to get a little bit off of the scripted content here and talk to you about something that just happened to BusyWeb. Um, for photography, you know, if you're going to look for tips on how to go there, you're going to you're going to want to look at the photography blog. It's really great. They tell you how to shoot images for the web, how to resize images, and how to position and compose your images, your digital photography, so that it works best to convey the message that you're looking for. PhotoPin is a photo finder that will automatically grab you great imagery for free. And a lot of folks uh, make the mistake of just Googling their imagery and saying, well, I need a picture of a compass, so I'm just going to Google compass and something's going to pop up. I'm going to right-click on it, pop it into my, or save it to my desktop, put it into my website, and I'm done. Well, even the best of us have been burned by this type of thing. Um, BusyWeb has a client and partner that was using images that they had gotten from Google and placed that into, an, into their website without purchasing the license from, for that image. Uh, happened to be an image of a hamster in a wheel, I believe. And so we got, just a couple of weeks ago, a nice little nasty gram from Getty Images that said, you're using a author or a licensed version of our imagery well, and you've stolen that image essentially by putting that on, on your website without having a license for that image. And they gave us lots of wonderful options. If you have, if you need to use this image, you can license it. If you do have a license and we don't know about it, we don't have it in our, in our records, um, here's where to contact. 
But if not, you owe us 850 bucks. Now, nobody wants to see that they, out of thin air, owe somebody 850 bucks. Um, the legalese and the craziness on this is um, very detailed. And the kicker is the web, the image was in no way, shape, or form even hosted on the BusyWeb's website or on BusyWeb's website. So we had an image that was hosted on a outside tool. We had copied and put an iframe into our website to share that information for a, an event that we had published two years ago. And somehow the little um, gremlins at Getty looked through and found a image that uh, was used on our website and are charging us 850 bucks for it. Now, we're still fighting it because I don't think that we actually technically should get charged for that. But there it is. If you think that you're going to be able to get away with grabbing things off of Google and popping them in, here's your official warning. Don't do it because it doesn't work. At best, you'll get hit with a cease and desist. At worst, you'll have a company like Getty saying you owe us 850 bucks and there's no way around it. So be careful and use the tool like PhotoPin to grab Creative Commons licensed images, images which are listed as free to use for specific purposes. And again, when I give you the demo on PhotoPin, I'll share with you how to use those images smartly and correctly without getting into trouble there as well. But in general, you know, take your own photos if you possibly can. And again, photography blog is a great way to learn how to do that. Um, all of our cell phones now usually have cameras, and so you've got a great camera sitting with you at all times. Use that imagery, use those images, and publish them on your website, and you can't go wrong. But make sure that you're taking advantage of things and not grabbing imagery where you shouldn't. You know, Google, Google Images is great for finding images, but not for images to use on your website, because you can get into a lot of legal and financial trouble doing that. For search engine optimization, and again, I'm going to get back to how to use PhotoPin in just a moment when we get to our demo, but another important part of imagery that you don't see covered very often or very well is the fact that if you just upload an image to your website and that image name is IMG001, you're losing a lot of the benefit that you would get from having an image on your website as far as search engines are concerned always include an alt tag and description on your images. Tools like WordPress, which is what BusyWeb uses to create our websites, have very easy ways, and you can see that right on this screenshot, of adding alternative text or alt text and making sure that the image is titled appropriately for best um, search engine optimization. When in doubt, just name the image what it actually is. So if it's a picture of a client or if it's a picture of a product that you're selling, make sure that you're using the correct name or the name that people would Google or search in order to find that image. Um, and if you do that, your results on your website, your search engine ranking will actually improve over time because you're setting up and showing Google that you have great relevant content and a thousand words, you know, an image is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a thousand images. If you optimize those images correctly at every stand, you're going to stand to get much better results than you would any, way, any other way. So make sure that you be, be uh, inclusive on there. And again, share and be fair on your imagery. Um, don't use copyrighted images unless you've purchased that license. So let's get into our demo now. I'm going to go over to first photo pin. And so I'm going to stop screen sharing for just a moment here. And we're going to re-screen share over to the browser. And so as we do that, here's photo pin. And so here we are. And at photo pin, this is a great tool, again, for bloggers and creatives that finds you free photos to use however you'd like. So for example, if I was looking for an image of a compass, I would type in compass, hit enter at photopin.com, and I'm going to find a bunch of images. Now here's a gotcha inside of PhotoPin. You'll notice up at the top it says sponsored images in orange here. Um, these images above this line 
are all images that you can get from, I believe it's Shutterfly, um, and you need to purchase those. So if you find these, if you want to go to Get Photo, it's going to take you to Shutterstock, and you'll download that image and purchase it. So if you were to buy that, you know, that's probably anywhere from 50 cents to 2 to $3 for a medium-sized image. And again, this large image is... 5760 by 3840, it's 18.9 megabytes, so you probably don't need that large of an image on your website. So by all means, save yourself some money, go for the medium size if you're going to purchase an image, or if you know that it's only going to be about 500 pixels wide and that's going to be okay, now go for the small one and save yourself even more. So if you grab these image sizes again, do yourself a little favor by going here. You'll notice that it's still 1.4 megabytes, so it's about 10 times larger than it should be at this point, but that at least gives you something to start with. And if all you wanted was this part of that image, you know, go for the medium version, or if you need to zoom way in, I would go for the large version and then crop it down to what you need. So as you go from there, that's the for pay version of PhotoPin. Now you'll notice here, that there's two types of licenses that are detailed in here. You're going to want to go for the commercial licenses, the folks that are okay with you using this for business. Um, so actually I didn't find any, any Compass images. Oh, there they are. They popped up automatically. So these are Creative Commons licensed images that are okay to use on commercial ventures. So when I'm going through this, make sure that you uncheck, and for some reason when you search, it always goes to non-commercial. So always make sure that you recheck commercial when you, when you uh, publish or process a photo pin search. So again, above the fold here, these are all pay. Here's the images that I can actually use. So if I like this image, and you can hover over this and it previews it, blows it up a little bit for you, or this image is very pretty as well, I can preview that one. Um, let's browse down a little bit. Oh, this one looks kind of cool. It's a kind of a sundial-y kind of bubble nav <coughs> um, navigation type compass. I love it. I'm going to grab it. So what I'm going to do here is go to Get Photo, and then a new window pops up, and it's going to ask me to select the image size. Again, as I mentioned before, you probably don't want to go any larger than 1024 in general. So if I knew that I wanted to start with that image size, I can just download that image in 1024 right there. PhotoPin, by the way, is a front-end tool to grab Creative Commons licensed photos off of Flickr. So um, if you're using Flickr already, you'll probably see some of your results show up in here if you have those published publicly. Um, but if I know that I only need this for like about a quarter of my page, again, I'm going to insert that, but I'm probably going to just go ahead and grab the 500 by 333 pixel wide um, image and download that one because that way I don't have to recrop it and resize it. It's saving me all that time there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I click this download button and it downloads it magically to my browser or to my desktop, wherever I need to browse it. You'll notice it downloaded it down here for me on Chrome. And then here's the other important part. It says photo credit and this content. So you need to grab this HTML text and put this into your image in order to meet the licensing required by this person that's posted their photo. So they've said it's cool to use this for, for um, commercial property or for commercial interests but it's Creative Commons, so I want to get credit for it. So this is the tool that automatically lets you give credit to the photographer that published this up. So I'm going to copy this text, and now I'm going to go to my website. I'm going to create a new post. And then from my new post, I'm going to go to, I'm going to type in um, compass image post and this is going to be some sort of a news item, or how about this? We'll call this navigating the web. Okay, sounds like a good thing to have for my, for my compass. I'm going to put in a little bit of text here, and compasses are great tools to use for navigating, but not really for the web. 
So really is misspelled here. I added an extra L with my fast fingers. I need to add this image and that content, um, that, that attribution into my post. So I'm going to click Add Media. And then I've downloaded that image. And so I'm going to grab that image and show it in the Finder so that I've got it. And it's going to pop up for me here. And again, I'm just going to drag it over. And when I drag my image onto this media folder, it gives me lots of options for what to use. And so now I've got my compass image in here. Now here's where you'd use that tool or that um, content that you copied off of PhotoPin. I'm going to change the title of this so that it's apropos for my article. So navigating the web and my caption is going to be the caption that I was given inside of PhotoPin. My alt text I can change to whatever I want for my search engine stuff. Navigating the web with BusyWeb. And then description I'm not really concerned about. Right from the uploader you can select your alignment. It's either right, center, or left, or none. I'm going to stick it to the right. And then uh, you can select what you want it to link to. So if you have a large image, but you want this to um, be resized to a smaller version to have people be able to click on it and zoom in, you would have it linked to the media file. And you can select by default an image size. Our, uh, WordPress will actually automatically resize based on the aspect ratio of your image and resize it down. So 500 by 333, if you resize that down to 300 wide, it'll automatically keep the aspect ratio and keep it at 199. Or you can select a square thumbnail and have that be 150 by 150. So it's, again, giving me even more options to edit my image inside of WordPress. I'm going to stick with full size right now and I don't need it to link to anything so I'm going to go to none. If I wanted this to link to another page on my website I could select custom URL and type in that URL but for now I'm going to go none and then I'll click insert into post. My image has now shown up and it says photo credit Mike Baird via photo pin and then the Creative Commons license on here. Now if I preview this art, this image or this page, it says navigating the web. Compasses are great tools to use for navigating. If I hover my mouse over this image, it should give me the alt text. Um, since I've been preview, it's evidently not, but it gives me a nice little box with a little bit of detail around it that includes the credit for that photo that I've gotten for free, and so it's only fair to share that with my folks, or to share that with my, with my clients. So that's image editing in a nutshell. And again, PhotoPin is a fantastic tool for finding any image under the sun. You want to make sure, again, that you're selecting commercial properties. And when you download that image, under the Get Photo, you want to grab this content and make sure that you take that attribution code and put it into the image section of, or into the caption section of your image so that this photo credit actually shows up. So if you do that and you post that in, that's sharing nicely, sharing legally, and keeping yourself out of trouble. Again, it's usually best to just publish your own dang stuff if you can, but if you can't, if you don't have time or if you don't have a creative staff that's out there um, and want to just grab images, PhotoPin is a fantastic tool for getting you what you need. Um, the other things that we should probably cover just a little bit is if you do plan to photograph people, it would be a great idea to have a release, a talent release form that, that you could have them sign and make sure that you represent those people appropriately if you're publishing their likeness on the web. So it would not be a great idea, for example, to publish a picture of someone you saw on the street even though technically you're, you're allowed to take pictures of people on the street because they're in a public place. Um, it wouldn't be a good idea to publish a picture of that person that happens to be eating a hot dog and say, this is why obesity is killing Americans everywhere, or whatever. Or to say, 
um, something that paints that person in, in, a, in an improper light. If you take a picture of a person that's smoking an e-cigarette and then pu publish that picture to your website and say, this is what happens when heroin addicts rule the world, that's going to get you in trouble as well. You don't want to misrepresent people and you want to make sure that you're getting a talent release form for anyone that's taking professional photos for you. Again, you can take pictures of public places, and I'm not going to go into the legalities of imagery, but there's lots of great um, resources out there. Actually, on Photography Blog, there's all kinds of great image tips, tricks, and legal issue discussions. So be sure to browse that as well before you get it deeply into what you're doing uh, with your imagery. But for sure, if you're publishing things, if you're publishing images of your staff members, just get a release form to make things um, as comfortable as possible going down the road and always paint them in a positive light. Um, you can buy stock photography if you have a negative article that you want to publish, um, you know, something about bike thieves or, you know, um, some, something else that you wanna, wanted to publish or talk to people about that has an alarming tone. But stock photos are really great for that because you already get the licensing and this person that or the person that the image represents is has already signed all the release forms through the company that you're buying the image from. So that makes a great option as well. So that pretty much rounds up what we wanted to discuss inside of photo editing and imaging image sharing. Again, if you haven't, I would encourage you to please join us on the Buzz Builders webinar to finish out this um, Q&A section. As, as we do each week, the last half of Buzz Builders is intended for the people that are dialed in. So if you join us on Buzz Builders by, again, going to busyweb.com, clicking on the article in the lower left, and then clicking on the link underneath the embedded video to join us live on the Hangout, we're going to be taking your questions live, going through tech support and Q&A, and helping you do whatever you need to generate buzz without getting stung. In wrap-up, just wanted to remind you about a few things. First, <coughs> measure, rinse, and repeat for everything that you do on the web. When you publish things and articles on the, on the internet, if you publish an image, you know, make sure that you know what you're doing and that you're linking appropriately to the Creative Commons um, articles. Make sure that you're covering your bases legally and professionally, and don't publish anything on your website that you don't know the origin of, because you might just get bit like BusyWeb did with an image that was licensed somewhere else. Um, if you have a concern about it, you can actually now grab an image and load it into Google, and I should have showed that, but you can just grab an image and drag it onto the Google search page now, and if there are like images elsewhere on the web, it'll show you, and that would probably have saved us if we just would have served or, or shared that, searched it, and had it shown up on Getty Images' website, we were like, oh, okay, well, we can't use this because it's licensed. Um, but track how things are going. If running images on your website is helping you, or if adding alt tags to your, to your images is helping you get, sh get found on the web more easily, that'll make it a whole lot easier to do more of it. But then also, make sure that you're cognizant of and thinking about images across social media networks. We set up our websites so that when you publish to your site, it automatically pulls in the lead image from the, web, from the post on your website as well. So make sure that you're publishing things that are okay to publish on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google+. Otherwise, if you publish something that's, you know, a little too racy or spicy or a little too polarizing, um, and you publish it to a network that you didn't intend, you could find yourself, again, in an uncomfortable spot. So just watch what you're doing and remind people where they can find you, but keep in mind that you're publishing out everywhere if you're doing it right. BusyWeb, of course, creates optimized websites for social content. We do social media strategy and content generation, all the way down to setting up your Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, and other company pages. We have a few dozen clients that we work with on that stuff, and it works really great for them. We do search engine optimization to help you get found better on the web, as well as search engine marketing, or SEM, which is Google AdWords campaigns. And we have some brilliant people that are helping us to get real results for our clients through advertising as well. We have the best web hosting in the business, so especially if you're on a WordPress-powered website, 
If you love it, awesome. We'd love to help you take care of it. And so we'd love to talk to you about that. And of course, I love hearing myself talk. So if you have a spot that you'd like to have BusyWeb come and join to talk about anything under the sun about social media or online marketing in general, please drop me a line and I would love to talk about that opportunity. Finally, join us every Wednesday. Next week, we're going to be talking about all of the groovy new Apple stuff that's coming up again. And in particular, we're going to be talking about how to use iOS apps to do some of your holiday shopping and get ahead of the game for once. There's some really cool options and apps out there that can help you zero in and grab some great deals online. And we're going to cover a lot of that next week. In addition to all the new wonderful candy like the iPad 5 and the high resolution uh, iPad mini, the um, Retina Display iPad mini, probably some new new MacBooks coming out. We'll have to see and, and uh, hear what they have to say about that. But then also I'm assuming that OS X Mavericks, OS X Mavericks is going to be getting going live, if not right on next Tuesday, then uh, shortly thereafter. And so we'll be demoing a little bit about what the barometer of the tech world, Apple, is going to be bringing to the world over the next couple of weeks. So um, if you're into Apple, don't miss next Wednesday's Buzz Builders webinar. And then finally, if you want to hear more about how to use images and what kind of images you're using on your website, maybe have us search and see if you've got any problems with your copyright images uh, or with copyrights on your images, fill out a Buzz report request form at busyweb.com slash buzz. We'll get you some real world tips and show you how to improve your online marketing. You can take that to your cousins, brothers, uncles, nephews, nephew, and have them do your website if that's what you're already doing. Of course, if you want to go right to a professional and get it done fast, right, and inexpensively, we'd love to talk to you about having BusyWeb help you do that for yourself. I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. We're going to open this up to the public now. So again, last chance to join us live on the Hangout for a live Q&A. Go to BusyWeb.com, click on the article in the lower left of that page, and right underneath the embedded video, you're going to see a link to join the Hangout. Click there and you'll be live with us where you can ask questions and get answers on anything that you need under the sun. This is our tech support time and the time when we help our clients do anything that they need, so we'd love to talk to you now. Again, I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. We'll talk to you next week where, again, we're going to talk about apps and um, all the new groovy Apple stuff. And until then, we hope you have a great week, and remember at BusyWeb, we help you generate buzz without getting stung. Have a great week.